going to be doing a video replacing the uh, inner tie rods today. Um, I did one years ago replacing the outer rods, which is uh, a bit easier. Today we'll be looking at the uh, inner ones and the ball joint, getting it off the steering rack. And I'll be showing it to you uh, off the car because the reason I'm doing this is I had to replace the uh, entire steering rack on my car. Um, which will make it a little bit different to all the other videos that you'll find out there which show uh, this job being done uh, in situ. Um, which will make it a little bit easier to uh, see what's going on because um, mostly when you look at this with it all on the car, you're just sort of looking uh, in from the wheel arch and uh, everything is very much sort of in the depths. Tie rods fail at their ball joints, uh, which will end up slack and with play in them, which may result in a car failing its inspection. If it's bad, uh, you can even feel the steering uh, while driving tends to feel loose and it drifts around. Uh, typically, you narrow down the steering components by lifting the front wheels off the ground and trying to rock the wheel horizontally like this. And if you take off the wheel or you get a good look from underneath, uh, you can start to narrow it down between the outer and the inner rods uh, or the rack itself. Now, I did a video on checking tie rods, so check that out if you need to. Um, if there's nothing obviously wrong with the outer rods, uh, which you can very easily see, uh, then you'll have to be focusing further in. And here you can see that the inner rod is the one that's moving with the, uh, the play. Um, by the way, on my uh, right-hand drive car, this is the right-hand side with the play, uh, whereas there is uh, none on the left-hand side. And that's actually a sign that it's more likely the rack, no, not the rods, because it's the steering wheel side that tends to present wear on the gear, uh, whereas if, uh, if the rods are failing, if one is gone, then you know quite commonly the other one will have two. So... You should look at both sides, uh, but you won't really know for certain until you look you know, more closely. Now, to do that, you'll need to get a look at the inner ball joints and uh, also be able to articulate the rod around. So the outer rod will need disconnecting from the wheel hub. Uh, to get this in more detail, see my video on the outer rods specifically, but it's a uh, simple enough process. You can get the overview here. You release the locking nut before anything else. Uh, while it's easier to brace the flats, uh, flats on the rod, um, I'm using a crow's foot attachment here with a breaker bar because it's attachable to a torque wrench uh, later for tightening, uh, but also because it's less likely to do any rounding damage to the nut if it's on really tight. Then undo the nut on the uh, outer rod ball joint spindle. Um, helpful to have a deep socket for this, otherwise you'll have to use a spanner. Uh, turn it down until it's flush with the threaded rod end, but then uh, leave it to help absorb the hammer blows. You know, smack it hard until the taper fit pops out of the steering knuckle. Um, and then you might need the little hex key to uh, hold the ball from spinning as you undo the nut the rest of the way. And the rod will come free of the knuckle. Now, right away, you might get an idea as to the inner rod condition. If it's completely loose and floppy, uh, much as this one is, that's a clue that the inner ball joint is worn. It should be a bit stiff, ideally, uh, uh, but at least you know smooth and uh, moving with a bit of resistance. In my case, this uh, definitely wants replacing, um, even though my main issue was actually with the rack. When you remove the outer rod, uh, if you're replacing everything with the same hardware, then uh, count the turns taken to unthread it so that you can put them back on as closely as possible. And I noted that along with the uh, right or left hand side on these because I was reusing them. Okay, so now to look at the uh, inner ball joint. Um, if you're working on the car, then uh, this is the view you're restricted to and you've got to work in that space to get the boot off and to get tools in. Um, in my case, however, I was taking the whole rack out, as I've mentioned, so this is my view instead. Now that locking nut needs to come off, obviously, because the boot needs to be slid off. Put it somewhere safe, and um, I suggest that you keep left and right uh, kept track of. Uh, the boot is held in place with clamps, and the smaller one is usually a spring type that's actioned with long nose pliers or vice grips. Um, if you want to reuse the boot, um, and you know if it's in good condition, then you might spray this section with some penetrating oil to try to free it up, otherwise you might rip it as it tends to get sort of glued on. Uh, 
Um, and at the inside, the larger end, uh, you need to see if it's still the factory clip like this, the metal band, um, or if somebody's done the job before and has uh, put cable ties back on. If it's the metal clamp, you need to uh, find its joint and get savage with a flat blade screwdriver. Just um, jam it in there and turn it. It'll uh, pop off eventually. And you'll do damage to it. The clamp won't be reusable, so don't worry about that. Uh, you just use cable ties for the replacement. And the small end needs to be uh, worked loose uh, gently again if you want to reuse the boot. And once it's loose, it just slides off. Right, now you can see the ball joint. And uh, you can go back and uh, repeat the visual inspection from the start to see where the movement is. So if you push and pull on this, and you, uh, you know, as you were doing before with the road wheel, um, and you can see the rod and the ball is uh, moving inside the socket here, then you know that tells you what needs replacing, doesn't it? Um, if, however, the ball joint is basically solid and the movement is at the rack bar behind, you know, you can see the rack bar moving uh, in and out of the rack. Uh, then bad news because that means the rack is bad, and that's uh, what I needed to replace. Now, the next thing is to get the rod unscrewed from the rack, and uh, this is a tricky bit. I'll say that the uh, the Ford Workshop manual instructs the rack should be removed from the car, as I have done, uh, but then uh, the rack bar itself should be held in a vise. Um, and even though I'm showing this off of the car, you know, most people in workshops are just obviously not pulling out the entire rack just to replace the rods, so it's a ridiculous assumption by Ford. And, and the uh, the particular crime in this case is that they don't provide any flats on the end of the rack bar here. So as you try to torque on the tie rod, you can't provide any counter torque uh, in order to protect the rack. So it's a real pain. Uh, I tried a few things to hold it, uh, as I'll show you now, but I mean, honestly, none of them really worked. Now, there are also no flats to work on the uh, ball joint, the ball joint body, uh, which is what you need to turn. But you can at least get a tool for that. These uh, tie rod tools are just a uh, sort of U-clamp with serrations on the inside for grip. And you just clamp it up using the nuts um, with a uh, 3 8 square to, uh, to turn it. So it goes on like this. Yeah, you'll need to tighten the nuts quite a lot before it will grip properly. But um, it's quite easy to uh, put it on. Now, the first thing I tried uh, was holding the rack bar with some vice grips, uh, trying uh, different techniques for makeshift draw protectors to try to stop damaging the bar surface. So with that and a uh, breaker bar turning the, the, uh, the rod tool, that worked and I did get it off. However, I don't recommend this uh, as, as with just the, uh, the fabric I was using here to try to protect it, it wasn't enough and I did end up marking the chrome on the rack bar. And if you damage a section of it that needs to um, be going inside the seal inside the rack, you know, it might not end well. You're going to end up with leaks coming from the rack. So I tried other things like rubber as uh, vice jaw protectors, but anything that was hard enough to stop the damage was not enough to hold it and it would just slip. Um, so, yeah, if you don't actually have a, a proper bench mounted vice, then, um, you know, and you're not taking the rack out of the car, then. You know, I, I resorted to the same technique that you see in any, every other real-world guide, where, which is to just not worry about it. And you simply wrench on the gear and trust nothing breaks internally. Now you see here I'm using the same vice grips just to hold the rack body using now the, uh, the bolt mounts on the outside, on the body. Yeah, if you're doing this on the car, then obviously it's all bolted down, so you don't need to um, hold anything. But, you know, doing this... The, uh, the rack bar itself is not being supported. The way you could do to stop bending the bar is to use grips on the rubber and, uh, sorry, grips on rubber, you know, as protectors and just don't worry about them slipping because if you pull equally on the one side as you push the other, then uh, even if you're not holding, the, uh, holding it in terms of torque, you are nevertheless countering the lateral force. Um, so I just don't think there's a practical way to actually counter the turning moment uh, without damaging that bar's sealing, you know, chromed surface. So it's tricky. Now check your replacement rod is identical. 
Uh, if the length is different, then that might be okay, but the uh, positioning of the outer rod uh, will be different when you thread it back on. Uh, by the way, you see this replacement rod is not straight, um, and I couldn't straighten it by hand. I had to hold the socket side with the vice grips and then action it with my foot just to uh, get it straight. So you see how stiff the ball joint should be when it's in uh, good condition. Uh, some vehicles will have a locking pin that inserts uh, in, in the thread after installation. But Ford are just uh, relying on nothing but torque here, so I figured some Loctite wouldn't hurt. Uh, thread the new one on, and uh, then it's you know just a reversal of the removal process, except with a torque wrench uh, if you want to torque it right. And I suggest you do, because uh, too loose is obviously dangerous, uh, while too tight ris uh, risks damaging the rack because of those difficulties in holding the bar. The Ford spec torque is 110 newton meters, which is quite a bit, so uh, dial that in right. And just before continuing, uh, make sure the new ball joint is clean and uh, has a good amount of grease present in the socket. I just cleaned out some gunk here and um, added a bit of new grease just for the sake of it. And then place a bit of uh, silicone grease or uh, some other rubber safe lubricant around the sealing surfaces for the boot. Uh, this just helps it seal up and uh, also install a bit more easily. And when putting the boot back in place, orient it to suit the breather pipe on the rack. And don't forget to uh, plug that back into it. You'll need a decent sized cable tie to clamp the rack side. I'm working on this from the top, but uh, if your rack's on the car, then you'll be doing it from the underside, most likely. Uh, vice grips on the spring clamp for the other side. Um, there are uh, obvious sections marked on the rod, by the way, for the sealing bit on the boot to sit between. Uh, once clamped, then the, uh, the ridges on the rod will keep the boot positioned right, uh, even as it concertinas in use. So do make sure it's in the right place before you release the clamp. And this is the locking nut for the uh, outer rod. Make sure you put that back on before you go threading on the outer rod. Um, when you put this uh, back on, remember that the nut, the nuts have orientation to them. The uh, the flatter side of it needs to be facing outwards, so that it, that's the bit that butts against the outer rod. And we're back to the uh, in the car perspective again. Rack working okay, and the boot flexing how it should. Uh, when putting the outer rod back on, uh, counting those same number of turns it took to get it off, I like to use some anti seize on the threads uh, to. to try to ward off corrosion as much as anything. Uh, these are the bits that are turned and adjusted when you do an alignment, uh, so it'll make life easier for those guys too. Uh, so notice here um, where before the rod was so loose that it would flop down under its own weight. Uh, this replacement is stiff enough to support itself in midair, and in fact it takes a little effort to move it around even. So the nut on the uh, outer tie rod spindle is another job for the torque wrench. That's uh, 40 newton meters on this one per Ford. And as to the locking nut on the inner rod, it needs to be snugged up. The uh, the torque is 45 newton meters, but I wouldn't worry too much about that if you're driving straight to an alignment place, uh, which you will almost certainly need to uh, to do having done this work because uh, having disturbed the inner tie rods, the um, the toe will not be quite right. So get a front end alignment done. Otherwise, that's it. So I hope that was helpful. Have fun out there.